Let's take a look at Religious Indoctrination Teddy. This is a little teddy bear that religious people can give to their children and it encourages subservience to the Lord by singing them cheery songs. Let me give you an example. So you press this button. Uh, other songs it's got are Jesus Loves Me. And one that forces the children to read the Bible. Indeed. So that's it. So I'm not really sure. There are certain ethics to this thing, but let's just get straight into it. Let's dig into his little butt here and try and get the voice box out and see what's the circuitry is in here. Can it be repurposed? Can it be reprogrammed into darker things? Mm, I think this is mm, this is kind of sewn in, I think. They don't want you taking it out, probably so children don't eat it, as sometimes happens, apparently. Uh, if this is going to take a while to get out, yeah, it's tied in. There may be a, another reason for that, and it's just to stop people ripping it out so hard that it... Oh, there's a thread. Let's cut the thread that it rips all the connections out from the switches, which is, to be fair, probably the main reason it's doing it. Me and Ralph, my brother, were along the same lines of the happy, cheery music and fun things. We were kind of uh, lured into a local church when we were young with the offer of candy. And uh, we accepted their offer of candy, and what followed was uh, regular visits to this church thing called Sunshine Corner with other kids in the neighborhood that were kind of recruited as well. Oh, here's a little wiring loom. Here is a little wiring loom. Uh, and as part of the, as well as the cheery anthems that we sang, we were rewarded with more candy. And then uh, as if we memorized certain religious things, they gave us toys as well, cheap plastic toys that broke very quickly. Um, did it work? Well, to get my toy, I was required to memorize Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy and be able to recite that without flaw to get my toy. I got the toy and clearly I memorized that religious thing. Does this have a switch? I don't, I'll just leave it connected to Bible Teddy. Let's take the batteries out of this. Once again, it contains a screw to stop small people opening it up and eating the batteries. It takes three triple A's, apparently. I've kind of stalled making this video because I know I'll end up saying some derogatory things about religion, won't I? Yes. This is despite the fact that when I was young, I was brought up in a family where my dad was a church elder in the Presbyterian Church of Scotland. And my mum was a Sunday school teacher at the same venue. So regular visits to church and getting the Bible beaten into me. With force at times. Oh, it's a very small circuit board. How do, how do they fit all that religious power into one circuit board? This is going to be glued in. Oh, it's coming out. Oh, it's going to be a blob, isn't it? No, I see what looks like a memory chip, possibly. Is there something else or is it just that chip? Right, tell you what, I think it's time to um, take a picture of this and then we'll explore the circuitry. One moment, please. Okay, the picture has been taken. The reverse engineering has been done. If you thought it was quiet before, it's not quiet anymore. It's been given the cardboard speaker treatment and is extremely loud now. Definitely loud. The surprising thing about this is that this little chip here it manages to squeeze in three tracks roughly a minute long each. That's pretty impressive. So let's zoom down this and we'll explore the circuitry. Not there is much to explore. Rather sadly, this chip has two numbers on it and they both threw up Google Wax, which is kind of rare. Google had nothing at all. Nothing in research results at all. Total Google Wax. So the odd thing is that on the back of this circuit board, it's just got three components. It's got two capacitors, which turns out are in series. And it's got a resistor, which is to tame the speaker down. And it went from one of the speaker outputs over to a spare pad, which is normally associated with the transistor for a different application. So you get your plus and minus coming on, and it goes to those two capacitors in series. I'm guessing if they've got two in series so that uh, 
if one of them fails, the other will limit the current into it. It'll basically block the current into it, so it's not going to go bang. Because who wants their TED to go bang in the middle of a Christmas carol? Well, a, a biblical thing. There is a place for a decoupling capacitor next to the chip, but they haven't used it. And after that, the chip looks like a special purpose chip. It has two speaker outputs, uh, positive and negative. It's got three inputs and outputs. It's the way they've got the thing here. They've got three switches in this. But by the look of it, the fact that this one is ring ground suggests it's only designed really for one sound effect plus motor control. But they've configured it as three different tracks and they've uh, foregone the two motor control facilities, foregone. Um, what else is there here? Well, the, let's take a look at the motor drive. It looks as though it's got an H-bridge driver here because this chip here has positive and negative going to and two control lines, and that goes out to a motor. But there is the option that if you use this control line, you can just stick a simple transistor in with a resistor on the base and it will just switch over to this pad, which was used for the speaker as a sort of blank pad. But it can switch down to the negative connection. So you could have a motor con con uh, connected between here or here and here, and uh, it would basically um, give you a motor. I don't know what that before, perhaps a vibrator motor. So it goes, Brrr, feel the power of the Lord. I'm not sure. The other one would probably turn a head back and forth, maybe make a mouth open and shut. I'd guess it's a universal chip for this. Anything else here worth mentioning? Not really. Let's bring in the schematic. Here is the schematic. I mean, you've kind of seen it all already. There's the batteries, giving a plus and minus, well, plus 4.5 volt supply and a zero volt rail. There is a switch in the battery pack. The two capacitors in series as built-in redundancy is the only thing I can think of here. The mystery chip. Go on, try those numbers. Uh, I, Google whacked me completely. And then the three uh, inputs that can also be outputs for the three switches. And then that 10 ohm resistor that had been stuck in series with the speaker. If they were wanting to control a single motor, let's draw up here. They would have that configured like this by the look of it. A NPN transistor and then a resistor going to one of those output pins. I'll just draw it straight to the chip. Uh, that would have to either have a back EMF suppression uh, diode, or more likely they'd put a little capacitor across it, as they often do. Um, the other option would be to have an H-bridge driver, which would be the same motor connected to the output of a chip connected to plus and minus rails, and then the two control lines going over to it and just controlling it via logic level. Interesting, but now are you ready to have your eardrums blown out with the full volume of this? It's got very creep, creepy lyrics. Uh, I don't know if they're stand or not, but uh, it goes into I love my sister because I love the Lord, apparently. So I've configured this so it could just plug into a USB port and we'll focus down onto this since it is more appropriate. This is going to be loud. I don't know if I should... Uh, I'll put it over... I'll put it down over here, just be, I'll tip, tip it aside, in fact. Oh, there's a uh, product LED wall light. There you go. Let's bridge this out. Uh, hopefully this isn't going to be absolutely deafening. It is going to be deafening, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's deafening now, right? That's enough. That's enough. The average current consumption wavers between 20 to 30 or 40 milliamps while it's playing, so it's not actually that heavy on the 5 volt supply. Uh, I won't let you hear the whole thing, it's tedious. But there we have it. Uh, Jesus, Teddy. Mmm, Jesus loved me. Doesn't love me anymore. Particularly because I've just disemboweled it. But that is it. It's a. Uh, uh, device for enforcing religion on the wee babies. And, uh, yeah, it would be interesting to have programmed with different things, but that's not going to happen because you'd actually have to replace the circuitry completely so it could go, praise your invisible master or you will burn in hell. Um, Sleep well, little kitties. <laughs> yeah, you could do things like that. But uh, in the meantime, that is it. I recommend buying one for anybody. No, because it's just a horrible idea, but an interesting thing nonetheless.